authors, it's Melody here. Welcome to Author Nation, your go-to resource for everything you need to be a non-fiction author from planning to promotion and everything in between. And in today's video, I am going to summarize the book Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And I'll tell you right now, this is a long one. Bird by Bird is broken down into five sections. Writing, writing frame of mind, help along the way, publication and other reasons to write, and finally, last class. Okay, let's break it down. Part one, writing. This is where she gives you all of those gems about actually putting words on paper rather than staring at a screen and pulling your hair out. About getting started, she says, and I quote, don't worry about doing it well yet though, just start getting it down. To help you do that, she suggests that you write at the same time every day, make a habit, train your unconscious to kick in and write. And if you need to hold an imaginary gun to your head, do that too. About short assignments, she suggests that you just take a very small chunk. Don't try to think about writing a book. It's too big. It's overwhelming. You can't do it. Talk. Think about writing a scene. Think about writing a dialogue. Think about writing a piece, just a piece of the book each day. Don't think about the whole, you'll never get it done. About shitty first drafts, she says, just write it down so it's going to be shitty. Once you have a shitty first draft down, you can work with it. Before that, you have nothing to work with. Perfectionism, she says, and I quote, Perfectionism is the voice of the oppressor, the enemy of the people. In other words, profession sucks the life out of your creativity, your playfulness. Learn to be kind and compassionate to yourself, be messy, and make big mistakes. About school lunches, she says, everyone took a lunch to school, and every lunch said a lot about who that person was, where they came from, their family, their, their family culture, their community. Be observant, look at the details, and uh, write about your own school lunch. About Polaroids, she says first drafts are a little bit like Polaroids, right? You take a photograph, and then you air it around, and you, you wait for it to come into focus, and when it does come into focus, you notice, it, notice things that you didn't notice when you were looking at the scene. Writing's kind of like that. Sometimes you think you're writing about one thing, but you turn out you're writing about something else. Allow that. About character. Allow your characters to be the best and the worst of themselves. Let them get themselves into trouble and figure it out on their own. Don't go around trying to save them. About plot, and I quote, plot grows out of characters. Get to know your character. What is important to them? Watch what they do. About dialogue, good dialogue breaks the monotony of exposition, but bad dialogue ruins the flow. So when writing dialogue, read it out loud, listen to how people really speak. About set design, imagine the scene that you're writing in. Just stand in that scene and look around and imagine that scene. Imagine the walls, the trees, the colors, the temperature. Every scene gives us layers of information about the present, the past, and the future. About false starts, this might be my favorite chapter. When writing a book, keep looking because I promise you the more you look, the more you dig, the better it'll get, the more you'll find. When you first walk into a scene and you look around, you just see the, like the, what's obvious. But as you stand there and you look deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into things, you see more and more and more and more. And sometimes when you write, you write your first draft and you write the outside. And then when you write the second draft, you're writing deeper. And then when you write the third draft, you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. It's okay to have a false start. You have to start somewhere, just start. About plot treatment, she says sometimes it's a good idea. Plot treatment, it's a dramatic telling of a book. It's longer than an outline. It's shorter than the book itself. And it, um, it's a step-by-step -step through the scenes of a book and it'll help you get things in order. About how do you know when you're done? You never know when you're done. Or maybe you do know because there's nothing left in you to give, and that's when you're done. Part two, about writing frame of mind. About looking around. Writers need to look around with both detachment and compassion. So look at the scenes, look at yourself, look at others from a detached perspective, but also from a compassionate perspective without blame or judgment. It's not easy. About moral point of view. Everyone has one. And I like her image of, um, you know, um, unfolding layers, right? Because we all have a moral certainty, certainty. We all have like a sense of like what we believe. But as an author, you don't necessarily want to send a message. You might want to just lay things out for a reader to decide on their own. It's like kind of leading them into a dark wood and then giving them the flashlight and letting them find their way out. About broccoli. Yeah about broccoli. There's a chapter called Broccoli. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself after a childhood of not being seen and heard. Find your own voice because your intuition is important. 
Don't confuse your negative narrative with your inner voice. They are different. Pull them apart. Find your voice. About radio station KFKD, and this is a great chapter. I actually read it to a, uh, read the first section of this to a student one day in a class because I felt she really needed it. Um, you have two battling radio stations in your head. One blares how awesome you are, and everyone should recognize you as a genius, and the other hates you and lives to destroy you. There's a balance between the two. Find a balance between the two. I find that most most authors live on the side of, you know, hating, hating and trying to destroy, um, hoping that when they publish, they'll be loved. Um, find a middle. Rituals can help you turn that radio down. About jealousy, I said we'd get here eventually. About jealousy, to combat jealousy, she has three suggestions. One, get older. Hurry up, man, get older. Um, <laughs> B, talk about it until you're over it. Uh, it sounds like therapy to me. And three, this is my favorite, use it as material, right? She talked earlier about going inside and finding that inner self and using that as material. This is a great place to do that. That's honest though. Part three, help along the way about index cards. She says carry an index card. Well, nowadays we carry a phone or a tablet or whatever we carry and we record it and we, we, we tap it out or we write it in a journal, whatever you want, carry your metaphorical index cards, write notes, they matter, look back on them later. About calling around. Um, in this case, she was talking about calling up experts to get information when you need it. You can also Google things, but to be honest, I get what she's saying. There's nothing like talking to a human being who feels passionate about what they're doing and listening to their vocabulary, listening to their tone of voice and, and feeling that and being able to translate that into the book you're writing. So if you need expertise, chat with an expert. Don't, don't just Google it. About writing groups, they can be fabulous as can conferences and courses and workshops, but go there for inspiration. If somebody looks at your work and says, you'll never be published, this is awful. They're not doing the right thing. What they should be doing is giving you good feedback, helping you get to the place where you are publishable. So yes, go to workshops, go to courses, go to conferences and find the people who are cheerleaders, who are honest and also gentle and compassionate at the same time about someone to read your drafts. Find a writing partner, aside from the courses and the workshops and all those things that you might do, find a writing partner. Find someone who either you're exchanging writing with or they are willing to read your writing and give you honest, gentle, and compassionate feedback. It can make a world of difference to a writer. About letters, and this was another favorite chapter of mine. If you're having trouble writing a book, write a letter. Write a letter to your grandfather about the character you're writing about. Write a letter to your child about uh, one of those moments in your life that you want to write about in your memoir. Write a letter to your favorite author telling them why you're writing the book you're writing and how that they inspired you. Start writing your book to that person, right? Write letters. If Do whatever you need to do to get those words out somewhere on some paper somehow. About writer's block. If you can't write the book, write a letter. Again, to whoever you need to write a letter to. Write the book as a love letter to your favorite person, your favorite author, in honor of somebody. Find something that inspires you to write. Part four, publication and other reasons to write. I thought this section was really, really important. Um, about writing as a gift, right? About writing as a present. Write a book as a gift to somebody. Think about, wow, I want to write my memoir for my children. I want to write this nonfiction book as a gift to my favorite client. Think about writing as a present. About your voice. And I quote, the truth of your experience can only come through in your voice. Find your voice. About giving. Give everything you have to that book, believing that when it's all out and that book is out in the world, you will have more to give because you will. You are not a limited uh, being. You will always have more to give. About publication. We think of publication as the crown on the throne, in the castle of the of, of authorship. Well, there are other reasons to write. Part five, the last class, is just a tiny little section. It's not d divided into chapters as the rest of it. It's just that one. It's a bit of a hodgepodge of advice. And it says, uh, write with a vengeance, but do it nicely. And libel, don't do it. 
The link to this book is in the description. Get yourself a copy if you don't have one. And if you've read it, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what your favorite chapter was. If you haven't read it, grab a copy, read it, and come back and let me know what you thought. Tell me what your favorite bits are. Tell me what you hated, whatever you need to do. And if this video has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you'd like more of the same, subscribe.